Now I'd like to show you a titration curve when a weak acid is titrated with a strong base. In this example, we have 25 mils of 0.5 molar acetic acid in the flask, and that will be titrated with 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide. Before any sodium hydroxide is added, there is a weak acid solution in this flask, and the pH is 2.5. This pH is well above the pH in the other video where we started with 0.5 molar HCl. Same concentration, but a strong acid. As one mil increments of NaOH are added, the pH increases drastically, then begins to level off into what they call the buffer region. This continues until a drastic change in pH occurs at the equivalence point. Notice this equivalence point is above 7. This is different than the strong acid, strong base titration in the other video, where the pH was 7 at the equivalence point. In this titration, the pH is about 9 at the equivalence point. That is because all of the acid that was in the flask at the beginning has been neutralized to its conjugate base. So at the equivalence point, we effectively have a conjugate base solution. Beyond the equivalence point, a strong base solution exists, which is similar to the titration of HCl with NaOH. After the equivalence point, what effectively is in the flask is a strong base. Between the beginning of the titration and the equivalence point is the so-called buffer region. This is where there are measurable amounts of weak acid and conjugate base in solution. At the equivalence point, when all of the acid has been neutralized, there is effectively a weak base solution. And beyond the equivalence point, there exists a strong base solution. Here's a spreadsheet showing the calculations for the titration curve you just saw. At the beginning of the titration, when no base is added, the pH is based on a weak acid solution. The calculation for determining the hydronium ion at the beginning of the titration is something you've done in the previous chapter. Taking the square root of the initial concentration of the weak acid and multiplying that by the Ka. As strong acid is added to the solution, the calculation for the pH is based on the buffer equation. This occurs up until the equivalence point. I want to point out something regarding the pH in the buffer region. Notice before half equivalence point, which is right here, the pH is below the pKa and the weak acid concentration is greater than the conjugate base concentration. At the half equivalence point, they are both equal. This is when pH equals pKa. Because remember, in this equation, we have the log of the conjugate base divided by the weak acid. When these two values are the same, the fraction is 1, the log of 1 is 0, and the pH equals the pKa. Beyond the half equivalence point, but before the equivalence point, the pH is greater than the pKa because the conjugate base concentration is greater than the weak acid concentration. At the equivalence point, all of the weak acid has been neutralized and what remains in solution effectively is a weak base. So the pH is based on a weak base calculation. And notice the pH is greater than 7. And this should make sense because we have a weak base in solution, not salty water as was the case with strong acid and strong base. At the equivalence point, we need to take into account the concentration of the conjugate base. And this is where it is important to remember to add the original 25 mils of acid solution to the 25 mils of base solution that was added to determine the actual concentration of the conjugate base. Beyond the equivalence point, it's a strong base solution. And the calculation is based on the excess hydroxide in the solution. For all of these subsequent calculations in the strong base region, we need to take into account the dilution effect, that is the addition of the 
sodium hydroxide volume to the original 25 mils of acid solution.